it does work and you're a great advert for my approach because you, you everything you write is really lovely <laughs> like oh right, it does work uh but unfortunately no one no one knows about it so my issue not yours so yeah i want to get to the bottom of this it's floating your bat rotating over maybe it needs to be later down the line maybe it's quite a, a advanced thing so right. experiment with it as ever yes Add a bit of momentum and what i find is that when i'm when i used to swim i'd, I'd zone out and and i'd kind of i i wouldn't go blind as such but i wouldn't really be looking i i you kind of lose a sense of where you are when you're when you're swimming and i find that if you look as you turn you're back in the room because vi vision is so powerful and yeah there's something about when you, when you're moving you don't there's do you know the thing about vision where when you turn your head you don't actually see the bit in between you only see the point you look at and the point you you finish at. yeah, yeah. The bit in between is just your brain makes it up which is weird right it's, it's a bit mind-blowing yes. but when you're swimming you're turning your head a lot and there's a bit of blank space but if you give yourself a, an idea of looking or noticing something like the ceiling or the water or your hand going over you are watching the hand going over you're not just moving your head from one to the other so your vision is more engaged in the process Okay. I don't think I've written yeah. that down in there. Yeah. Just, no, just no, good I, point. I went yeah. to a vision workshop yeah. by this guy called Br Peter Grunwald, and he went from being myopic to having 2020 vision by the power of thought, by the power of mm. intentionality, right. stuff. And it's quite profound, but but it's that sense of being engaged in your arm going over. Yeah. That, make, that keeps you more engaged and present. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think the other thing I was I was saying then was with my previous swimming technique, I think momentum was always my friend. And you know, if I try and go faster and more streamlined, I definitely find it easier. But I think I do that at the expense of trying too hard, you know. So I guess now I'm always caught between floating on my back, being in a balanced way, you know, your, your style, and then trying to think, well, how do I turn that into movement? And breathing etc and i do feel that at the moment i'm probably lacking momentum because you know, i'm floating on my back etc so somehow i've got to get momentum into it without it becoming frantic that, and without it becoming tiring yeah that's that's bang on in fact when i what i remember your video I, what i saw from your video from my kind of alexandri techniquey perspective i didn't i was not looking at your technique or your balance and such all i'm think, looking at is and i think how i perceive it is you're going in your swimming all i can see is someone going oh am i balanced or am I, oh, i've got to stay balanced or oh, am i balanced is this i might be completely wrong but that's the impression yeah. i got which was someone trying really hard to be balanced but at the expense of flow oomph it didn't right. have any yeah. it was it was quite flat as in Yes. But, yeah. So yes, your habit of momentum, which is go for it, keep it going. This is yeah. This is why there's a section in the course about transitioning from float, glide, swimming, but not calling it swimming. Yes, I remember. Yeah. So float, glide, move. This is exactly what you talked about. How do you go from floating? And if we start calling it balancing, then that helps because the floating is very static. So yeah. floating, yes, yeah. gliding with momentum, turn that into moving through the water rather than swimming. Mm -hmm. If we start to label it differently, we start to think differently, and that's going to be down to you to experiment with how much momentum do you need to help you roll all the way over or get more of a glide or... Yeah. And for now, a breaststroke glide is a good one, but we do want a front call kick. Yeah. And I think if you like the idea of a double click, which is, you know, this, this, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. And it's just with one leg. So as this arm goes in, so the right leg, arm, right arm goes in, 
mm -hmm. there's the double kick on my left leg. Well, as it stretched Another out, argument. yeah, basically. Yeah. Because is it one of the things about the timing? It's yeah, arm goes in, double kick. Arm goes in, double kick. And because it's side to side, the timing mm -hmm. lets it happen. You know, you're there's clues in your momentum as your arm goes in. And we've got, I mean, this is kind of a sure method thing, I think, where because mm -hmm. it all blurs for me, but I think it's basically yeah. your arm goes in. My arm goes in. I mean, yeah. you can go in flat, you can go in this yeah. way, this way, but I feel like it goes in this way. I don't know where it comes from. But my I'm thinking more of my side going in because I know mm -hmm. that my arm's here. So I think that this going in yeah. takes distracts me from thinking about you know all that. My side goes in, mm -hmm. double kick, and there's a bit of momentum. So oh, when do I bring my arm back? When when do I know? When do I what when do I start my next stroke? Well, you can feel it. Your momentum's waning. Right. So if it, if it drops off completely, you're just going to sink. If you go too soon, you haven't enjoyed the glide. And yep. there's a little article about bubbles. Your arm goes in, disrupts the water, creates bubbles. If you notice those bubbles, you're present because you're alive, you're conscious. They start to disappear. Oh, I'm not thinking about technique anymore. I'm thinking, oh, that's a nice clue. I'm running out of momentum. Oh, okay, ready. Yeah. So your swimming guides you, your breath guides you, your momentum guides you, your feedback guides yeah. you, not, oh, I have to do it now. Yeah. I have to do this. I have to. You're not counting seconds. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're making choices. And if, in you the if you don't need a breath, then, Brian, are you still thinking, put the shoulder in, but don't turn the head? Are you still thinking, yeah, rotate I mean, the I body? Swim, yeah. I, if I do ever get around to putting these videos back in the course, I maybe do four, five, six strokes. Because obviously, when you first set off, you've got a lung full of air. You haven't done any exercise. You're not knackered. I'll swim mm. and swim and swim, and then I'll take a breath. And on the, the next length back, I might do two or three breaths and then think, oh, crikey, I need a breath. And if water goes in my mouth or I don't, I rush it because I'm human, you know, or then I need to take another breath. And all I'm doing is following my breath. I'm not. I pay no attention to how many strokes I'm doing. I'm paying attention yeah. to my breath. Yeah. So if water goes in your mouth, what do you do? Just take another breath more soon? I cough. Oh, Carry on swimming, that... get my balance back. And, oh, yeah. okay, I need a breath now. Because right. this whole thing about breathing out and sink downs breathing out and breathing out as you walk or breathing out as you hum, I have... And I think this is true for everyone. It's not just me. I, I don't have massive lungs, but I always find I've got so much more air in my lungs, even when I've breathed out. Breathed out, breathe, yeah. Mm. Because there's always a little bit more. That's why I sink down. I have to kind of breathe out a little bit just to get down to the bottom. There's a little panic going, oh, I'm running out of air. Oh, actually. Oh, now I'm running out of air and I come back up. So... And I, I want you to be safe doing these sink downs because <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I had to stop my insurance. So, you know, this is all on you. This is, there's no, <laughs> no sure. you know, I, I'm yeah, not. No, um, that's fine. But personally, in your short, whatever, there's, there's yeah. some sort of insurance. Yeah. There. If I were in the pool, no, you're I'm, you're I'm, I'm, I'm fine when I'm under the water. Um, I'm fine swimming underwater. I'm fine, you know, diving in. It's just I can't swim <laughs> and take breaths. <laughs> Well, you, it's brilliant though, isn't it? Because you you you've actually done the hard yes. bit, you know. And the sink downs. And I'm still a, yes, still a little bit scared of deep water, or used to be, but obviously the floating's helping that. Yes, and I mean, I I until I discovered this my own journey, I had no idea I was scared of the sea until I went until I reflect back on it and I go, oh my god, that's why I was so scared. So yeah. And there's there's a lot of fear there, but you've you've already got that, and you do your kite surfing, and you know that you're so much further ahead than me and other clients. But but the fundamentals aren't there, and that's why I'm guessing you came to me because your method is probably you've done it, I've done a bit of it, and immersion and all these other techniques they don't teach the fundamentals. No. It's technique, isn't yeah. it? Technique doesn't yeah. help if you can't. Yeah. 
I'm good at I'm good at just doing things for a short period of time, you know, like a short exercise or something short. But if you tell me, you know, if you could put me in a swimming pool now and said you're not allowed to touch the ground for 20 minutes, I'd probably struggle, you know, although your balance technique yeah, massively helps that, obviously, but in, in the yeah. past, you know. Or if you yeah, if you say you've got to go from here to here, yeah, you've got to relay something around the pool or something, but not touch the ground, yeah. Just the thought of not being able to put your feet down. Yeah, it freaks me out a bit. I think mean, yeah, makes me tense, you know. Right. Well, that's that's perfect. That's why you're here. So the idea of yeah. you swimming or moving through the water, because the transition, this is a couple of things here then. I'm going to finish with 2A Connection, just talk about that a bit more. Yeah. Oh, and one thing about your semi-supine. So, yes, you're just to, just to clarify, your knees are up on the ground, but when you're in the water, they're obviously going to be splayed and you'll look like oh. a loon. They have to be because balance. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm quite embarrassed with this video of how I look, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, but yeah, fine. find your floating shape. Find your floating shape. Do a breaststroke kick. Turn that into a glide. Turn that into a glide. Make sure that there's enough glide, and then see what you can do with your arms. With the rolling over, I think maybe that has to be a bit later because it's later. a lot going yeah. on there. Yeah. So maybe but try the double mouse flip. I like the stroke. idea of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think um, I'll try that, yeah. So momentum is your friend. It's just you've got to find the appropriate level. semi supine yeah, just clarify that isn't knees up. Am, am I okay to finish with this one point? I want to hear a bit more, but uh, this yeah, two-way yeah, connection. Sure. Two-way connection. So it is in the course, and I have talked about it. You can do it while you're sitting down. You can do it when you're standing. You can do it when you're standing. You can notice the floor beneath your feet and you can be aware of without going into your without analyzing you go oh there's there's the floor beneath your feet and there's the the floor beneath my bum and there's i've got my hands on the oh there's this connection so it's touching the desk the floor feet are touching the, touching the carpet but also the carpet is supporting the floor supporting me oh and the chair is holding me up there, there's a two-way connection and in the same way that if I body map, say this pen, this pen, and I run it against the not the nib because it'll run on the wall, but if I run this against the wall, I can feel the wall, and all of a sudden I've kind of body mapped the pen, and now my arm is the pen, or the pen is my arm, because I can feel mm -hmm. the. Oh, you can probably hear the scraping. Can you hear that? Yeah. So I've I've kind of body mapped it, so I'm noticing. And the reason I want to notice things with without analyzing and concentrating and focusing, I'm noticing it, I'm still talking to you. I'm using the appropriate level of attention on the floor and the two-way connection with the floor and the seat and the two-way connection. And that that's, this two-way connection is in the water as well. So as you push off and the glide is the best bit to do with these experiments because you've got three seconds to go oh okay there's the water touch my arm or there's the water on the back of my neck or yeah it's enough time you could oh, maybe maybe yeah. when i do it i can now go whole body sensory unified of field of awareness of my whole self but for what long yeah. i'd go there's the there's water touch my fingers oh the, the fingers of the water is touched my fingers my fingers are touching the water something like that Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want it to be a mantra, but it is a conscious noticing of, mm -hmm. and trying to do all of the body parts all at the same time is just going to blow your mind. But you have a lot of time, a lot of glides, a lot of strokes to go. Oh, okay, one body part, one part of me, and yeah. then you start to notice yeah. the bits that aren't in the water. Mm -hmm. or they're in the water all the time yeah. so you don't even pay attention to them like your chest will be in the water you're facing down and the fact that it's supporting touching the water but being also supported by the water is worth noticing so it's that level of noticing and the glide is the best time to do it because what else can you're going to do apart from think oh, i've got to do the shopping i've got to put the washing out got to... all that stuff is is in here whereas all the other stuff i'm talking about is out here mm -hmm. does that make sense 
Yeah, yeah, and no, I do recall this part, but yeah, it's good to get a recap of why we're doing it. Yeah. So this is the where this comes from is is Alexander's technique. My yes, it's not my approach, but my mentor's approach, which is now my approach. It's conscious control, which is an awareness of your thoughts, but it's also a real world mindfulness. I think I would call it. So that you're not being mindful, but going, oh, those are my thoughts. I'm tracking my thoughts. I mean, you know, you're you're in your head. You're noticing the real world. You have to be in the water. Yeah, being and in the moment. Right. Yeah. And because you're swimming, there's lots going on. So trying to do it when your arms going in, your legs kicking, your timing, you know, mind blown. But the glide. Yeah. The glide. Yeah, testing. I do remember the, the wiggling the the hand and the wiggling the toes as well yeah yeah on opposite legs so as your yes. arm goes in opposite limbs i mean you know arm goes in yeah quick yeah. wiggle of both you're connecting these two parts to be yeah. a whole and this idea that you you have to tense your core and all this stuff you're not supposed to rotate you can't have too much rotation all this high elbow it's body parts but if you think of this going in and this side going in and then you're swimming as a whole you don't need to do anything else so that's that's kind of what i wanted to talk about so we've got more momentum in your experiments two-way connection everything else sounds really positive and your awareness of your, your the feedback you give me is showing that you're thinking the way that i kind of am advocating So do you have any more feedback or questions? I've talked a lot, probably because I'm trying to get too much. Yeah, no, us. no. Yeah, no, I think when you mentioned about doing the, the leg kick, double mouse click, at the same time as doing the opposite arm, I think I should um, experiment with that, I think, and uh, bear it, remember what you said, which was let that give you the glide and then be mindful of gliding and when you're starting to slow down a little bit, then thinking, need to think about doing the next one. Yeah. So not, and then, not, fran not, not frantic, but at the appropriate point in time. I think, I think if you pay more attention to your breath, that will guide you and you won't have to worry about it. It will, your system will yeah. inform you of what to do when. You just need enough yeah. time to let that out breath out. Now, with the gliding and the experiments, obviously, it's a bit contrived, isn't it? So you're going to have yeah. to figure out a way to extend your glide yeah, to let the breath out, and then your in-breath will happen. Yeah. And to get the breath out, Brian, we, do you recommend always starting the gentle exhale during the glide immediately? Or yeah, is yeah, it never okay to never hold it when you're facing no, in the never. water, no? No, no, I mean, what's the point? Yeah. You're underwater. You're going to die. <laughs> yeah, it's only because I think sometimes I think well, if I hold it for 20 seconds first, then start exhal ex exhaling slowly, I can go further, but that probably leads to more tension. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's ego. You see, you're taking ego out of the yeah. equation. I mean, you won't be the fastest with this method, I don't think, you know, but hopefully yeah. your enjoyment will be higher. Your consciousness yeah. will be more alert. You'll swim forever. Okay. I mean, I, I can't swim forever, but I feel like I can swim forever. Mm -hmm. And even if I get tired, which I was doing some lake swimming last year, I got tired because I was cold, flipped on my back, regrou regrouped and flipped over and then went on. So it just feel like I'm still, oh. I'm being overtaken, but ego is, ego and yeah. adrenaline is it gets in the way yes. of a lot of things. Okay. Cool. All right, well, I hope that was yeah, useful. No, sounds good. Yeah, from, from Monday next week, I'm here on my own. My wife goes, goes home. We're going to party. <laughs> no, I was, I was just thinking, so if you, if you ever did want to look at me swimming or anything, and then we potentially could do one you know, live, but I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But Well, I mean, I am, I'm in the pool with a client next Tuesday, which is basically takes me all day to get there, all day, an hour to get there. An hour to, so Tuesday's kind of tricky. Yeah. Monday yeah. will probably work. I mean, this is a good time, eleven o'clock. Yeah, we we could try a live session. I've never done that, but why not? I mean, if you can set up the camera yeah. in a way, yeah. the video worked well. 
yeah all i'm more in, i'm more interested in your thinking as you're swimming not your swimming yes and um, when i when i talked about your i mean tell me if i was wrong but when i looked at your video was i right in thinking that there seemed to be a lot of analysis about a lot of thinking about yeah to be, be to be honest i haven't watched it myself recently but okay. it, it probably sounds about right <laughs> yes. i think that is my training you you when i look at people yeah. running I know what they're thinking, as in not what they're thinking, but their attitude, their mental, their mindset, they're running, which is, hey, I'm running, or, oh, I'm running, or they're doing something. Yeah. They're in running mode. And it's a bit like your swimming mode. You, you're so geared towards that, that momentum to kick, to solve all the problems. You're, this is unlearning that, to use the right level of, the appropriate level of, of momentum to get you where yeah. you want. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, book in a session because obviously you did play for four. So, yeah. Okay. To be honest, Pete, you know, I want success for you. Obviously, I do want you to keep booking, <laughs> but the sooner the better for you guys, for you, you know. Yes. Because, and if you did want to continue past this, I'm sure we can figure something out. But, and if you have anyone who wants to come and do this stuff with me, please. Sure. <laughs> please, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever your preference is, or I can video myself before then and yeah, send you something before well, then. Yeah, whatever well, let's you think, try a live but, session. Uh, yeah. I mean, video it by yeah. all means, but if you can yeah. set it up, we'll do 11 yeah. o'clock no. next Monday. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah. I'll I'll set it up. I have terrible problems with my calendar. I mean, with the I look back at all my email trails, a lot of them are saying, oops, got the time wrong, or oops, the calendar. This calendar system is part me, but it's part system. Yeah. And I've got baby brain as well. So 11 o'clock next Monday. I don't think we've got anything else on. Just okay. So I, I go to the same link you gave me and book it in then. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just double check Monday. Yeah, sure. Okay. Nine to 10. I've got something at nine. To, oh, that's when I go shopping. Oh, yeah. No, no 11 o'clock's perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'll be back from Lidl by 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, I hope that was helpful. Okay, um, awesome. No, thank you. And you'll send an a recording with... of this. Yeah. I, I think we covered I think a lot of it in the first one anyway, didn't, didn't we? I used to do a praise. Yes. But I'm... Yeah. Uh, were they useful? Because they took forever. <laughs> they, they were good. But yeah, but obviously, I appreciate you've got <laughs> other things I'll see, on. I do. So, I do see what enough, you can I, do. I'll see what I can do. I do love talking about this stuff. I could do this all day. But you don't have yes. time to talk today. But yeah, I'll no. see what I can do. Um a bit annoyed sure. about it. I forgot to video it. All right, well, let's yeah. leave it there. Thank you very no, much. Awesome. No, thanks, Brian. Good to speak to you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.